Well, nice to have you with us this morning. They say sometimes you have to take monthly economic data in this country with a grain of salt. You might need to grab the whole container this morning, folks, because Canada's economy added a whopping 150,000 jobs in January. That is a huge number, and it was 10 times what Bay Street was expecting. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that interest rates have risen rapidly as part of an attempt to cool down the jobs market. But if you dig deeper, we have now seen Canada add jobs for five straight months. Employment has risen by 326,000 positions since September. And in addition, this January jobs growth was more than double what we saw in December. In other words, it is accelerating. So it sends a very strong message that our tight labor market is still running at an unsustainably hot pace. On the inflation front, the concern has been wages. Now, average hourly wages were up 4.5%. That was actually a cool down from December. And remember, we had a long stretch where that number was more than 5%. But at the end of the day, it's nowhere near where the Bank of Canada wants it to be to suggest that inflation can get back to its target level. And so that is a complicating factor for the Bank of Canada, which, by the way, has told us that it is now in pause mode with rate hikes because it wants to see how those eight hikes we've seen over the past year are ultimately going to impact the economy going forward. Tiff Macklin this week was already highlighting some of the worrisome issues uh, in the country tied to those higher interest rates, the housing market key among them. But given this job surge, here's the one-year chart for the loony. Even more dramatic if you look at the intraday because we saw the Canadian dollar spike at 8.30 Eastern time against the U.S. dollar when this news crossed, perhaps suggesting some in the market believe more interest rate hikes are coming in this country. Let's keep in mind, though, a week ago, we did see a blowout jobs report in the U.S., so we'll be navigating to see how things settle out. But I want to get some immediate reaction from a regular BNM Bloomberg contributor, Carl Shimada. He's chief market strategist at CorePay. Do we have to pay our economists on Bay Street just a little bit more so we can try to get these numbers a little bit more accurate? I mean, what? What happened here? We clearly need better crystal balls. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all got broken on the on, on the winter sidewalks. But uh, this is a phenomenal number. Um, the only question I think at this point is whether it's a repeat of what we saw in December, right? Uh, you know, December we saw that initial print of 104,000 uh, new jobs created. That was then revised down a month later. Um, and so, you know, I would wonder here, although you're seeing broad based gains and this is, you know, clearly a positive for the Canadian economy, whether we would ultimately see a revision if revisions were allowed here. OK, well, I, I don't know that I wanted to go inside baseball so quickly, but <laughs> I, I did allude to the fact that we have to take these monthly data points with a grain of salt in this country. Yeah. Why? Well, because, you know, I think we're having trouble with the seasonal adjustments. Uh, we had a number of issues that uh, sort of plagued the data around the same period last year. Uh, on a month over month basis, we're having difficulty with that. Um, but also just, you know, the, the, the data collection mechanisms that we have available are, are far poorer than they were prior to the pandemic. We're not looking at predictable, predictable environment here. However, of course, if we look at that longer term trend, as you know, I, I think any prudent economist will do, um, you are looking at sustained job growth in Canada. You're looking at an employment market that is getting tighter all the time. Uh, all of that, you know, argues for tighter policy settings from the Bank of Canada. Yeah. And look, I mean, we'll, we'll see, maybe the folks over at OpenAI can work with Stats Canada and we can figure this data crunching out uh, over the longer term. But to your point, the immediate reaction in the market, Canadian dollar spikes against the U.S. dollar. How is it? That that the Bank of Canada could come out so confidently, not just with their decision, but they've also now, the transparency is rising, right? We got for the first time the minutes. The Bank of Canada knew there'd be a lot of, you know, debate over what was said behind closed doors on taking a pause on rates for now. Tiff Macklin gave a speech in recent days, again, explaining why we're in pause mode. So connect these two storylines, why the Bank of Canada would feel so strongly about a pause on the doorstep of what has turned out to be a blockbuster jobs report. 
Well, I think the numbers that they're looking at, you know, the aggregate demand levels in the Canadian economy, the uh, the level of housing market activity, business investment, uh, the business outlook reports uh, that, that the Bank of Canada regularly conducts were all pointing toward businesses slowing hiring around now. They were pretty now. bearish. They were extremely bearish. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at, so late 2021, I think 77% of Canadian companies were saying that they were going to look at hiring in the next 12 months um, or increasing their overall headcount. And the last, so Q4 of 2022, they said, you know, 25% of them were going to do the same thing. And so, you know, when you like take a look at that, uh, that would all argue toward an economy that is slowing. All that said, um, you know, the bank, along with virtually every other monetary policy maker on the planet right now, is arguing that we're on a data dependent footing. We're not going to, you know, make up our minds based on a single data point, but we're also going to retain the optionality to continue tightening if we need to. Hmm. Helpful context, and as a, a, an econ grad, I was taught that there is a lag with monetary policy, yes. and I think in recent days, especially since we just had this conversation a week ago, given the U.S. jobs numbers, that these interest rate hikes, which have been extremely aggressive, do occur with a lag, and right. we're not quite sure where the economy will be in six months, as opposed to looking in the rearview mirror for January. But all of that said, what is the market supposed to make of all of this? Right. And I think that's the challenge right now is that, you know, the, the, the markets right now are raising odds in the aftermath of this print. They are raising odds on another 25 basis point hike at the next Bank of Canada meeting. However, the big impact has been longer, uh, longer term, you know, toward the end of the year, early 2024, um, where markets had assumed that the Bank of Canada would go fully into pivot mode and start cutting rates. And we just and Amber Canwar spoke to Mark Carney. He said he's not expecting. That. I, exactly. It like that, that's expecting the crazy that. thing. Yeah. So if you look at it, anything that any major central banker is telling you, none of them are saying we are going to pivot. None of, none of them is saying we're going to start cutting rates or even that we're going to react to a decline in inflation in that way. And, and yet markets had become so convinced that one, we were going to have sort of a jobless uh, decline in economic activity and two, that central banks were going to begin cutting by the end of this year, that what you're looking at here is a highly vulnerable market position, right? You're looking at a situation in which that Goldilocks idea had become too enforced. And, and I think, you know, that's going to trigger a lot of turbulence in the weeks ahead uh, as, as market participants in Canada and elsewhere think about, you know, what happens if the bank does not begin cutting rates anytime soon. All right.